Ent The Charter of the Forest, was, which was a companion to the Magna Carta, was the agreement that said there are certain interests which supersede any political, any social order, anything else which are fundamental commons interests, like the ability to graze your pigs in the forest when the acorns fell, like the ability to go into the forest and take broken branches to use to heat your homes or to use to build your homes or to use to, to, to build fences for your pigs or whatever it wound up being. The Charter of the Forest said that there are things that supersede any imposition that is done by a monarch or done by a local leader or done by a community. There are certain things which are essential to being human not unlike the UN Charter of, of Human Rights and, and those types of, of documents, the Charter of the Forest says that there's essentially human things which supersede in value all other things. And no amount of enclosure, no amount of rules, no amount of imposition of any externality changes the fact that if my pigs need to graze in the forest, they graze in the forest. If my children need to go into the forest to pick up wood so that they can cook, they can go into the forest, and it doesn't matter whose forest it is. And we are at the stage where, by the way, the last Nobel Prize that was awarded in economics was awarded around people working on the whole issue of commons. And the great new initiative at the UN is about the reemergence of the commons. These are all things that are coming back into fashion. But the fact is that when we understand that we are common stewards of the things that we used to call enclosure resources, but we actually recalibrate and say, no, we're stewards of something. We don't own it. Just have a period of time during which we use it. As soon as we change that dynamic from enclosure ownership to stewardship, we actually take the first step, which then opens up the possibility for having conversations around consensus interests in shared resources.